Hello everyone. So yeah, so um, good to be here and and to speak at this event. Um, yeah, so as uh, MC has mentioned, uh, I've been using WordPress for for some time. Um, can you guys hear me? Uh, all, all good, right? Okay. Um, so I've been using WordPress for as long as I can remember, la, like since almost as long as uh, I use Facebook. I remember it was like first year in uni when Facebook first came about for me. Um, so just to maybe customize my talk a little bit, uh, how many are already existing WordPress users here? Most of you, right? And okay, cool. So I'll maybe go into a bit more detail. Yeah, so just a quick introduction uh, of Tech in Asia. Um, we have about over 100 people, uh, 14 of which uh, are in the editorial team. Uh, so we do about you know five to fifteen articles a day, um, as mentioned, about one point four million page views a month. So, um, so but aside from the editorial team, we also have uh, a uh, jobs feature where people can post and 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 their job postings if they're hiring or they can apply for jobs. Um, we also recently implemented a feature where people can submit content, so anyone can be a writer on Tech in Asia, basically. Yeah, so um, my job basically is to, uh, in, in Singaporean terms, so I, I write, I edit, uh, I help to manage, strategize, content strategy, everything. So, you know, that, that's what, how it's like in a startup, I guess. Yeah, so this is what uh, Tech in Asia looks like. Uh, it's been through a lot of uh, iterations. Um, yeah, so pretty straightforward editorial website. You have the articles, um, you have jobs, you have... We, we also uh, allow people to submit events uh, on our website. And on the top right, you can see the, the right button where people can uh, submit content. Yeah, so just a quick snapshot of the stuff we cover. Um, so this is EV, which is a great... Uh, personal assistant that arranges your meetings for you is, is actually a bot. So we do startup profiles, we do uh, leaks, uh, we do yeah, cute infographics like, like this. Um, yeah, just a snapshot of what we do. Yeah, so um, the, the, the subject of today's talk is really to give a glimpse uh, into how, how we use WordPress uh, to in our workflow, how we manage content, um, and, and how we publish on WordPress, basically. So uh, within the editorial team, we, we use something called Flowdoc, which is kind of like Slack or, or what's the other app? Hip, hip chat or something like that. Um, yeah, so uh, w whenever someone wants an article published, uh, rather edited on uh, by um, the fellow editors, they will post a, a link on a, a Google Docs link on Flowdoc and then you know some of us will just go in and, and we'll edit the article. Um, so we, we use like Google Docs as like the first stage of our editing um, before WordPress, right? So everything goes on there. Um, the reason we use Google Docs is that uh, it's very collaborative in that you know you can actually see editing happen live uh, you know as it happens on on Google Docs um, you can do things like leave comments um, you can so everything's very instantaneous right it happens uh, live so that's why we, we like using Google Docs um, yeah maybe there's something similar in, in WordPress maybe not so I love to hear uh, your thoughts as well if you come across something like this yeah so the, the first stage happens on Google Docs um, uh, we, we use something called Markdown. Um, I'm sure some of you are familiar with this. So uh, basically, Markdown uh, is is a very easy way to write HTML. We, you you can actually write HTML without knowing HTML. So um, yeah, this is basically Markdown. Um, so this is basically like a list, right? Uh, an, an unordered list. So the yeah, I I'll, I'll show you how how it'll look like later. Yeah, and then we move on to WordPress. So we we'll upload the article on WordPress. Um, yeah, we we put the picture, we insert the headline, and things like that. Yeah. 
So th there are a few very interesting uh, customizations we do in WordPress itself. Um, thanks to, to Lester, who's uh, really the brains behind everything in on our website. So uh, yeah, so we there's actually Markdown support uh, in WordPress that comes with Jetpack, right? Yeah, I, yeah. If you, you can correct me like, if I get anything wrong, yeah. So um, yeah, so basically how this works is that you can just copy and paste the Markdown into WordPress itself and in visual mode, um, and when you press preview, right, it actually turns out exactly the way you want it as a as a list in this case. So the, the bolding is there, the link is there, uh, without the need to like convert it into HTML first and then paste it into WordPress. So we used to actually manually convert into HTML, uh, but we managed to get rid of that intermediate step. Um, we have another customization. So we we did like a, a short code. So you know pull code and then and we end off with another pull code tag and. Uh, this is how it shows up on um, on WordPress. So, um, very nifty fe feature. Yeah, uh, another customization we did was that, um, so whenever we write about a company, we'll include like a, a profile of the company at the bottom of the article. So in WordPress, we, we are able to like select, you know, the company and then uh, once we save, you know, everything will show up here. Um, Another key part of our editorial workflow is that uh, we have like we're very clear about uh, who edited the article, and the reason for that is is first of all accountability, right? If if somebody screws up the editing, you know who's uh, at fault basically, and and that includes me, right? Um, yeah, and also helps us to keep track how many editing work people have done. So nothing fancy here. It's just like a text field where we key in manually ed edited by whoever. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very important this. So we have a uh, what, what plugin we use for this? Uh? Custom coded. Custom coded. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So basically, we it's very important for a uh, editorial website like Tech in Asia to. Um, to appear right on Google. So when Google, um, and the reason for that is, is Google has like a 90 character um, limit for, no, not 90, 60 character limit there about for headlines. So anything after that, right, uh, will be cut off. Um, that's why we have this, right? So um, we have like uh, guidelines. So if we surpass 60 characters, we will know. Um, again, right? This is like SEO best practice, generally to to keep your description within one four five to one five five characters. Um, so we implemented this to make sure that our writers follow the guidelines. Um, yeah. So if they, so which that's why sometimes the headlines on our website is actually very different from the headlines on Google, uh, because. Um, we want to make sure that our headline is short enough and concise enough for Google and uh, also contains the right keywords. Yeah. Yep, so we have this in WordPress as well. Um, well one thing we implemented recently was uh, nowadays, you know, branded content is, is like the next buzzword in, in media, right? Like BuzzFeed is, is all about branded content. And yeah, Tech in Asia, we started going into this uh, recently. So uh, we, we used to do this like brought to you by who, uh, the sponsor manually, like someone would do the image and then would um, upload the image and then um, so th the whole thing was an image. Uh, so but now we just need to key in the uh, sponsor logo and then it will show up there. Uh, so that's another thing we did. Yeah, so um, I, I guess uh, at, at this point, um, is there any questions about, you know, anything you want to know about how we do things or, uh, yeah. Um, how do you get people to, to, uh, to read your stories, to just publish it, to come or something? Okay, right. So, um, I guess how do we expose our content to readers, right? Yeah, just make it kind of explosive. People have to come or Right. So where do our readers come from? 
Yeah, because sometimes one story just goes by viral very easy, but sometimes there are some stories just like nobody wants to watch it. So yeah. how, how do you get people really get excited about that? Okay, um, there are many ways. So. Uh, number one, uh, we sometimes do stories specifically for people that come in on Google. So we are very, so we do like keyword research. Um, so one example was that, um, you know, a lot of startups, they are looking for funding in Singapore, right? So I did an article about, um, so I did some keyword research. I, I found that venture capital Singapore was very popular. So I did an article like listing down all the venture capital firms in Singapore. Uh, and until today, that has gotten traffic because I think it is still the number one um, article if you search venture capital Singapore on Google. So that's one way we we get traffic. Uh, very simple keyword research on Google, and then we write content targeting those keywords. Um, another way would be, um, I think that it's, it's an art when it comes to writing stories for social media. So a lot of our stories. Uh, a lot of our readers come from Facebook um, so we are very careful so we, we pay a lot of attention to the headline <coughs> like um, we try to emphasize the the human element in every story um, so this uh, last night there was a story about this startup called Clint's who they are basically college dropouts and uh, they left their scholarships to to do this company. So um, we we make sure we spend a lot of attention. We pay a lot of attention to the headline to make sure that um, um, the headline draws in readers. So uh, the headline was something like you know college dropouts uh, raise funding to do their startup, something like that, uh, to highlight the human story in it. Um, yeah, but I'm not sure if I'm answering your question though. It's like. So, um, do you do and do you pay Facebook for, for the readers too? Um, very rarely. So, all our traffic has been organic. Um, I, in the early days, we just kept publishing, kept sharing, and then we would publish a story on our Facebook page, uh, and then we would just share ourselves, and then we tag our friends, uh, and we just grew organically over four years. Okay, yeah. so you just keep publishing stories and then people are just coming back in and come to your website. Yeah, so it's it's a numbers game. Like the more you publish uh the more you publish the more likely your content will go viral. Um that's one. Number two obviously is that you understand what makes good content. So I so there are there are a lot of studies done, right? So content that's emotional, right? So if the content makes you go like holy shit, right? And or makes you really happy or joyful or angry um, those kinds of content tend to propagate on social media um, so we will look out for those kinds of stories um, yeah any questions yeah yeah uh, I, I have heard that you are using custom uh, as your plugin and so I'm wondering why not using something proved uh, you as SEO or it's not good yeah, so I, th I think <laughs> yeah, Lester should answer that. <laughs> because our tech Asia, we are fully on React front end. Uh, our tech in Asia front end is fully on React, so we don't need anything. We can't have anything that's code or, or snippets that's injected into the team. We don't use the WordPress team at all, so everything is exposed via API. So when we do our custom SEO, we can expose it via our custom API as well. Then the React front end will render based on uh, Google or yeah, or Facebook, OG text and Google meta description. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Um. Any any other things? Yeah. do you work with uh, freelancers? Because I know you have um, like writers and you have community community uh, page. Because um, the community page is is not paid for freelancers, right? So mm. do you um, do you work with freelancers? Um, okay. So your question is whether we work with freelancers. Yeah. The, the two type of content on your side, right? Yeah. Uh, so we re we 
we don't really rely on a lot of freelancers because um, I think just part of how we do things is that we like to have full control over our content. So uh, we engage mainly full timers. Um, so we, on rare occasions, we do get freelancers. Actually, no, actually, yeah, I need to correct myself. Um, in the India team, so we have like about four writers in India, uh, full time writers. Uh, we we just tried one. So in India, we do have like three or four regular, very regular freelancers. So how we manage them, obviously, is that uh, so at, at first we we we'll seek them out first. So these are writers that um, that our team members already know, um, and through their years of working in the industry, so we we'll engage them. Uh, after we treat freelancing as like an audition. Um, so before we hire someone full time, we, we sometimes give them freelance work. We pay them, of course, um, and then yeah, if, if they do well with their freelance articles, if their language is good, if they write well, um, the content's great. Um, we'll probably hire them full time. Um, so that's the extent to which we use freelancers. Uh, we have regular freelancers who we have like full timers who become freelancers. Um, so. Sometimes the story ideas come from us in that we'll, we'll have like, hey, I, we think this will make a great story. We'll pitch it to the freelancers. Uh, if they're interested, they'll work on it. Sometimes they pitch ideas to us. Um, so we have one person in India designated to manage the freelancers. Um, yeah, so that's roughly how it works. Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll move on to with the talk. So, so uh, one thing I'll touch on is that, um, like I've been using WordPress for seven, eight years, right? So, uh, I I guess I've seen in a way how the media landscape has evolved. So I just want to touch a bit on, um, the the future of media and and where I see this going and whether WordPress will continue to be relevant. Um. So in in the past. This has how more or less websites have been operating, right? How editorial websites uh, have been operating. So that the website is king and everyone else, right? Uh, if you're publishing on Facebook, if you're publishing on Twitter or LinkedIn or Google, the objective is to drive traffic to your website. So everything else services the website. Um, but I, I find that in, in the past, few couple of years maybe things are starting to shift right so so this is the future basically where Facebook is, is like eating up the media and everyone about us are like serves in, in a vast kingdom um, so so what's happening is that you know Facebook has has instant articles um, which we use um, that basically lets readers uh, read content on Facebook without even leave, leaving the website leaving the social network. Um, Google is also like encroaching on um, on media it, it, because like nowadays you can can play what tic-tac-toe on, on Google now or or solitaire or something like that. I think there was a recent announcement. Um, they are even launching a travel uh, feature where you can I don't know like check flights or something on Google. So in a way it's also encroaching on um, on websites, so it, I think publishing is going to be very distributed, um, and I'll give you a very good example. So this is BuzzFeed. Um, you, you can see that since twenty fourteen to now, the website traffic has basically been flat, right? Um, but what has happened is for BuzzFeed is that its video views ha has actually grown by many multiples, right? So um, it's publishing on on Facebook, it's publishing on YouTube, it's publishing on Snapchat, uh, Instagram, and every other platform you can think of. So I think the, the era of websites, uh, I think websites will still play an important role, but uh, as a publisher, if you're thinking of, of publishing, if you're running a content marketing website, if you're doing content marketing, um, I think this is the future, right? The era of websites, the websites are sort of diminishing. Um, so just to play this, 
so this shows like how the BuzzFeed editorial team has is evolving. Um, yeah, let me wait for this to. Yeah, so as you can see, right in the beginning, it was very straightforward, just editorial, and then they published to BuzzFeed.com, right? But over time, um, you started to see how they're doing YouTube, Snapchat, Vine, uh, how they are syndicating to over twenty other platforms. Um, yeah, so I, I think I think this is the future, and uh, at Tech in Asia, we are also s uh, starting to shift. Uh, in, in terms of direction so only like a couple of months ago we started to realize that you know we need to stop treating our website as the final destination right for readers uh, rather it's it's uh, a means to an end um, it's one of the many ways which we can expect which we can reach out to to our audience um, yeah so we, we started experimenting with video um, so this was published directly on Facebook. Um, yeah, and we didn't. We yeah. So, and and this got viral on Facebook. Um, this was an article that we did on Facebook as well. So in the past, right, how we would do this is that we would. So the news breaks, right? Okay, we are all scrambling to write the story. Um, we would just write this story on, on WordPress, and then hit publish. And once we publish, we share onto Facebook. Um, but now, like we can just write the story on Facebook, right? Why go to the website? That and, and I, I think that's a question that many uh, publishers have to grapple with. Uh, and the story did well. And um, so yesterday night, right? Um, I was doing it. I was writing a breaking news story. So I, I I wrote the story on Facebook. I in did the interview on Facebook. Um, I shared the story on Facebook as well. Only thing I didn't do was the image, right? Which I used Canva. Um, so Canva, who's familiar with Canva? Okay, not bad. So Canva is, is basically a, a, a image editing tool that's much easier to use than Photoshop, and I highly recommend it. Okay, um, yeah. So publishing is moving to social networks. Um, yeah, we, we started doing stuff on Instagram as well, so experimenting with memes and uh, very visually driven stories. Um, so like if you click onto this story for example, it's actually a shorter version of the story we did on the website. Um, um, so the, the story on the website was about the news that they got funding, but um, this story started with like, you know, are these, these Brothers like Indonesians, Indonesia's uh, next media tycoons, a uh, more human interest-driven stories. Yeah, so it, it's very interesting what I'm seeing now because uh, in the past we would just write for the website and we would just distribute it everywhere, but now we are starting to write for Facebook. We're starting to write for Instagram. And we are starting to think, right, how should th this story be presented natively for the Facebook audience? Um, and this has kind of complicated things for us because now instead of just having like one workflow, right, we have three workflows for three different uh, platforms. So Facebook, uh, website, and uh, Instagram. And then we have a video team that does uh, our videos and we have an infographics team. So the, the question becomes, right, you know, will WordPress still be relevant? Um, okay, honestly, I don't have a good answer to this, but um, I, I do think, and I'm not an expert on WordPress, okay, so um, I, I think WordPress does have the capacity to evolve, right, and, and become uh, whatever the community wants it to be. So this this will give you an example. So this is cold schedule. Uh, anyone uses cold schedule? Okay, okay, cool. Something new. Um, I haven't used this, uh, but it, it has come across come across my reader. I might use it in the future. So this basically allows you to use WordPress as a means to organize your editorial calendar, to see what you're publishing, um, to publish from WordPress to Facebook to Instagram. Okay, maybe not Instagram, to Twitter and other platforms. 
Um, so effectively, WordPress becomes like a hub for your entire publishing uh, workflow, whether it's on the social network or on the website. Uh, and, and this is integrated, obviously, with WordPress, uh, but it's also a standalone solution. Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, to end off, maybe I'll just talk about, like, if you're a publisher, if you're a writer, if you're a communicator, uh, if you're in marketing, I guess what it takes to succeed is really to be a jack of all trades, uh, to be able to tell stories visually, uh, whether you're on Facebook, uh, on Snapchat, uh, on Instagram, to be social media savvy and know what the latest trends, um, and not just write for the website. Yeah, and to be an expert communicator in more than one format. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, so uh, any last questions? Yeah. Question. Um, in the past, when we used to write for the website, it's because. In the past, when we write for websites, it's because the website has, like, um, you can sell ad space and all that. But when you write for the social media platforms, it's more just like brand building and building up your brand, right? Correct. So is, is, is that indeed uh, the shift? Because if you do on Facebook, then. How do you earn money out of it? Right. I, I think banner ads are, are dead, la, basically. Uh, I mean, obviously, Google still makes a lot of money and Facebook, um, but the click-through rates are so pretty low, right? I don't know, less than, what, 0.1%? Something like that. Um, so, okay, so how Tech in Asia makes money, uh, we have our events, we have our conferences, we are, we, are, we are seeing a lot of growth in branded content. So brands say IBM pays you like $5,000 to write an article about um, their, or about Watson's, their AI solution. And then, so an article, uh, so it's a full article and it's brought to you by IBM. Like, I, like you saw just now, right? Uh, well, yeah, I think so. Yeah, like, like this. So, um, so what we're seeing at Tech in Asia is that uh, we're seeing a lot of interest from brands in this kind of advertising. Uh, I think it's more engaging than banner ads. Um, and sponsors don't care where this is published, whether it's on Facebook or Instagram or whoever, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Any one last question, maybe? Yeah, at the back. How would, how would you measure that? How Sorry? Would, how would IBM measure whether it's reaching their audience? Right, so uh, that, that's done for now. Um, we, we, so banner content is still new to us. Uh, so we are tracking it Firstly, using Google Analytics, so we know how many page views the website is generating. Uh, Facebook pages, if, so we run a Facebook page, and on the Facebook page, there's an insights feature that can track the reach of your uh, articles on Facebook. So I think every uh, social media platform has their own analytics. Yeah. So just combine that, and then we share that with the sponsor. Okay, actually, you've got time for one more question. Lah. Hi, uh, yeah, I, I think at the point you mentioned about maybe being platform agnostic is interesting. But I was also thinking like, you know, Facebook recently they've been changing their algorithm to probably school publishers in some way. Yeah. Yeah. So as a whole, right, when you think about it this way, uh, when it comes to revenue, everybody, as much as they say, you know, uh, it's going to be good or whatever, everybody wants a piece of the cake uh, for revenue and so on. So when it gets too good, I think the publishers, uh, sorry, the social media platform, they will just turn off the tech for the publishers as well. Yeah. So having said that, right, so in the longer scheme of thing, how do you think publishers, I, I don't think anyone have an answer to that. Yeah. It's just about how maybe you pick your brain on that. Where, yeah. where do you think that can be made up for publishers, whether it's uh, Tech in Asia or even like your Wall Street Journal of the World mm. or New York Times and so on. When now you're kind of at the mercy of social media <coughs> as well as, yeah. Yeah, good, good, good question, very good question. I think about this all the time, right? So uh, I think there are two answers, right? So either you really be like BuzzFeed and your platform is now stuck in that. If Facebook turns off the tab, you just go to the next platform. So in the sense that you're not reliant on one platform, um, so let's say Facebook shuts off the tab, uh, your, your reach drops, um, your team is adaptable enough to move on to the, to shift their strategy to adapt to the landscape. 
so that's one. Second, right, is to just ignore social media. So there are a lot of websites like uh, there's there's the information, right, which is this damn expensive website. You pay like four hundred a year, and then you get really good content. So it's very very high quality stuff. So it doesn't care. So the website doesn't care about social media reach. Uh, it's really about quality journalism. Um, New, New York Times is adopting a hybrid, so a paywall model. Again, right, very high quality journalism. Uh, so it's either really high quality stuff. Uh, you go the BuzzFeed route, just get as many people as possible and as many platforms as possible. Or tech in Asia, we subsidize our media using events and other revenue streams. Yeah, that's. Okay, so I, I think we're out of time. So uh, if you have any questions, I'm I'll be around. Yeah, I can answer them. Thank you.